Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to take a look at the upcoming changes in the Shadowlands Alpha when it comes to Death Knights. So this week the Alpha will be rolling out for selected content creators and I guess people who have been playing the game for a long time. And with this Blizzard also posted a list of class changes that they're planning on introducing with this Alpha um, that they want to get some feedback on as we roll into the new expansion. So at BlizzCon last year, we got a glimpse of what they have planned to add back into the game in the Great on Pruning. Um, and I already made some videos on those if you want to check those out. But we also got kind of mini patch notes as far as what the design fantasy is and what direction they want to go in. So in this video, I want to take a look at that and share my thoughts with you guys. So this is on the WoW forums. First of all, Death Knights, the header for it says, Former champions of the Lich King. Death Knights overwhelmed their foes with brute force and dark magic. In Legion, Death Knights became very narrowly focused thematically around their spec. For example, Death Knights having an, Frost Death Knights having an overwhelming majority of their spells be Frost themed only. In Shadowlands, we are unifying the core Death Knight kit by restoring many abilities back to all specs including popular utility options from the past. Under general changes, it says that once these changes are live, all Death Knights will be able to desecrate the ground around them with unholy magic to deal damage to their enemies with death and decay or neutralize their attacks with anti-magic zone. So these two are already pretty important. So death and decay is returning to frost and AMZ is returning, I assume, to all three specs. So Death and Decay returning to Frost uh, introduces some interesting questions about how it will function mechanically because for Blood, it cleaves your Heart Strike to more targets and as Unholy, it obviously cleaves your Scourge Strike. Frost Decay, however, already has an ability that is a Rune Spender and works on as many targets as they are in front of you, which is Frost Sight. So, Bringing Death and Decay back to Frost raises the question of which ability will it cleave? Will it cleave your obliterates? So if you drop Death and Decay, will you be able to obliterate and that's going to cleave to additional targets? Or will it cleave your Frost Strikes? Or will it just do regular AoE damage? And it's one of those things that you will just drop on AoE packs, but nothing else. The second one here is obviously Anti-Magic Zone, and Anti-Magic Zone can be either incredibly powerful or slightly underwhelming. So AMZ by baseline is a 30% magic damage reduction in PvP, but it has no cap. So as long as you're in it for the duration of AMZ, there is no cap to it. It's 30% magic damage reduction and that's it. However, back when this ability was in the game for PvE, there was essentially a cap on how much damage it could absorb. So think of it more like an anti-magic shell rather than an icebound fortitude. So whenever you dropped it on your raid, your raid got 30% magic damage reduction. Actually, I think it was like 20% uh, back then. But once it absorbed more damage than the cap, it just stopped working. So if it again has a cap, I don't think it will be as good as people think. However, if they don't introduce a cap with it, and it's just a flat magic damage reduction, even if it's something small like 20%, this can be incredibly strong utility for DKs to bring into Mythic Raiding, uh, and even more Mythic Plus, um, and obviously in PvP, it's going to still stay uh, relevant. So then it says, furthermore, every Death Knight will once again be able to tap into unnatural powers to temporarily turn themselves undead with Lichborn, or use Ra Raise Dead to summon a ghoulish servant to fight alongside them. So Lichborn is essentially Icebound Fortitude on a shorter cooldown, but it turns you into an undead. Now, back in the day, there used to be some interesting interactions where you could death coil friendly targets that were undead to heal them. So, for example, if your pet was taking a lot of damage, you could death coil it and heal it. Or back in Wrath of the Lich King, if you press Lichborn, 
then you could death coil yourself to heal yourself. So I don't think this will be relevant because death strike exists. Um, but there's something that they could um, play with there. Also, I like the idea of having a damage reduction on a shorter cooldown. I'm not sure if they plan on having Lichborn be essentially Icebound Fortitude, but shorter cooldown. And obviously with the downside of having your mobility impaired, because during Lichborn you walk a lot slower than you do um, with regular movement speed. So curious to see exactly how they plan on bringing that back. Then the second thing here was that all specs will now be able to use Raise Dead. So Frost DK and Blood DK will now be able to have a pet. For both of those, having a pet is typically just a little... It's like a guardian. So in the past, both Frost and Blood, whenever they use Raise Dead, you couldn't control your pet. It was more like a pet that you would get as Unholy from the All Will Serve talent. So it's a guardian, you can't control it. So I'm not sure if they're going to go the full pet route where you can, you know, min-max your pet, you can give it commands, or if it'll just attack whatever you're attacking. But the other big part uh, that comes with having a pet is the new Sacrificial Pact ability enables Death Knights to perform a Forbidden Ritual, sacrificing one of their undead minions, siphoning their health and causing them to explode and deal damage to nearby enemies. So this was kind of a, a thematic ability previously, is that you sacrifice your pet to heal yourself. Um, Death Pact, which is now for Frost and Unholy a talent, um, does kind of the same, but it doesn't sacrifice your pet. It instead puts a healing absorb on you that needs to be healed off. So previously, Death Pact was just whatever pet you had active, it would kill it and you would heal for a large chunk of damage. And obviously the implications being that you're trading more damage from your pet being alive, uh, especially if your raised dead is not off cooldown yet, to heal yourself for a portion of your health. Then lastly, we have um, the Frosty Grasp of Chains of Ice will once again bind the enemies of all Death Knights. AKA Blood DK is getting Chains of Ice. Frost DK and Unholy already have it and they're gonna keep it. For Blood, it's interesting that they opted to add Chains of Ice back. I don't think this will make a big difference. Um, in PvP it might, but Blood DK and tanks in general, um, with the exception of Guardian Druid for a season, are not really the meta in PvP. And especially if Death and DK is slow, stays a thing for blood decays i doubt that chains of ice will have much relevant use um in pve content but it's nice to have it uh, be returned to the spec so first let's take a look at blood so blood this expansion has had <clears throat> a few issues especially after legion where it had so many utility spells so much group utility so so self-sufficient it carried some of those and towards the end of the expansion ex especially in nihilota blood dk kind of found its place again but the spec still has a few core issues that make it almost unplayable in certain types of raid encounters uh, so what it says here is that at home in the shadowlands um, and amongst their fellow dead Blood Death Knights can learn new abilities and talents. Blood Tap allows Death Knights to consume essence from slain enemies to generate one rune and is repeatable whenever a Bone Shield charge is used. So this is interesting. Blood Tap previously um, regenerated two runes, but it just had a flat 30 second cooldown, I believe. So it's similar to Horn of Winter. So instead now it will generate one rune I assume costs no resources um, and whenever a bone shield charge is used you can press it again so bone shield has an internal cooldown but that in internal cooldown is not very long especially when you're attacking multiple targets i'm curious to see how blood tap will work i assume blood tap needs to be off the global cooldown even though i know blizzard hate putting abilities off the global cooldown nowadays um 
if it's only regenerating one rune and you can press it basically every time you consume a bone shield you're going to be pressing blood tap quite often as a dk and it even might be one of those things that um mid-level dk players will bind in or macro into abilities just so they always get runes back whereas high-end players can minimax it a little bit and only press it whenever it's actually efficient to press and you already have three runes recharging um but this will just add more resources to to blood dk and overall i think it's a good change next uh blood death knights will also get rune tap without needing to select it as a talent so this is huge Rune tap has always been on a competitive row when it comes to talents. And Death Knights have no mitigation. Death Knights will take all of the damage up front and then heal it back. That's how Death Knights work. In certain situations, however, you just can't take the damage up front. Um, this is not really the case anymore towards the end of the expansion. But early on in the expansion, if you had a boss that had a very strong tank buster ability, as a DK, you are just not able to live it because you have no mitigation. And if you take Blood Tap or Rune Tap rather, then you're going to end up losing a lot of mitigation between Rune Taps, which is also not the play. So you had to rely on externals um, or strong defensive trinkets. But having Rune Tap at baseline is an excellent change. Next, we have Relish in Blood it will significantly heal those bloody bruisers for each action or for each active bone shield charge and grant five runic power when death and decay is cast while crimson scourge is active i'm not sure if this is a baseline ability or a talent um and it's just more self-healing so it's like a death strike but based on your bone shields which is interesting uh, because I would add something like up to five stacks of bone shield. Otherwise, this incentivizes you to play at max stacks. Um, and also disincentivize you from pressing it when you're not at max stacks. So this ability can use a little polish, but I like the idea. Okay, let's move on to frost. You guys already know what the big change is for Frost. <laughs> Memories of the Lich King's legendary sword Frostmourne stirs the hearts of Frost Death Knights, who can again choose between one-handed weapons or two-handed weapon to cut down their foes. The harsh le lessons learned on the frozen tundra of Northrend have manifested into new abilities and talents. So. We get to choose between one-handed frost dk and two-handed frost dk um i already shared my opinions and if you watch my content you know how i feel about this i am generally not a big fan of two-handed frost dk because it was a much slower play style than frost with dual wheel does um but i'm also curious to see how they implement it will this be a purely cosmetic change and you will still use two-handed or your dual wield weapons so two one-handed weapons or will this be an actual like a gameplay change where you can either equip a two-handed weapon or two one-handed weapons the reason why in the past i've said that i don't think two-handed frost dk will ever make a return is because so much of frost dk revolves around having two weapons Obliterate do does main hand damage and offhand damage. Frost Strike, main hand damage, offhand damage. Your main hand has a different enchant than your offhand. Um, there's a ton of things that are now tied into Frost DK, which revolve around you having two weapons. So if they actually give you the option of either equipping one weapon or two weapons, I don't know how they're going to, to balance this. Obviously, one of them is going to end up being numerically better, and that's what people at the high end will play. What my wish is, is that it was a purely cosmetic change. Um, like you know, Holy Paladins, for example, are able to transmog their artifact weapon, which is a two-handed mace, um, even if they're wearing like a sword and shield, or mace and shield, or something like that. So I really hope that it's only cosmetic. 
otherwise they need to go into the base gameplay and base functionality of frost frost dk to change how it works to make it work with two-handed weapons next the iconic frostworms fury will be accessible to all frost death knights so no longer no longer a talent um that's good so frostworms fury is just an iconic ability and i hate to have uh to pick between that and more remorseless winter damage always having frostworms fury is cool because it makes you look um uh, in each fight for those perfect setups where you can get a huge dragon off um huge burst of damage and i'm curious to see what they're going to replace this with so frostworm being baseline very good change both for mythic plus for arena and for raiding Next, Hypothermic Presence is a new talent that halves the runic power cost of abilities for a moderate amount of time, giving the Death Knight the vigor to strike down all who stand against them. Think of this as Memory of Lucid Dreams, but in reverse logic. So Memory of Lucid Dreams essentially gives you more resources, essentially doubles your resources. Um, so instead of doubling your resources, what this new talent does is half the resources um, that abilities cost. So in essence, it works the exact same. And this will again be very good for Breath of Sindragosa builds where you press Breath of Sindragosa, you press Hypothermic Presence, and each tick of Breath of Sindragosa will only consume half your runic power. Um, so very interesting change here. And also, I guess, every time you obliterate, you only consume one rune instead of two. I don't know how this... Wait. Oh, never mind. This is just runic power. Okay. So, just runic power. So, it applies to Frost Strike and Breath of Sindragosa. But for Frost Strike, I don't think this is necessary. Uh, for Breath of Sindragosa, it's a pretty nice talent. It's essentially giving us Lucid Dream. Moving on to Unholy. Ooh, there's a lot of changes. Okay. While all Death Knights have some ability to control and reanimate undead minions, an Unholy Death Knight has chosen to specialize necromantic magic, and their abilities should reflect that. All Death Knights, all Unholy Death Knights, will be able to summon Gargoyle, previously a talent, to bring these flying terrors to their side. Finally! Thank God! <sighs> been waiting for this one i really hope that they keep the way gargoyle works where you ramp its damage uh because if it's like gargoyle used to be before um when you just summoned it and it dealt a flat amount of damage so it's a fire and forget ability it'd be a little boring but if they kept the ramping aspect of it where you dump runic power to increase the amount of damage your gargoyle is doing then I think this is a very good change because for single target, Unholy Death Knight uh, throughout Legion um, or throughout BFA rather has kind of been struggling a little bit until this last last raid here. And I guess in BOD it had its moment. But other than that, Gargoyle was never used. This entire expansion Gargoyle was never used and I really hated to see that just be a dead talent because it should be the no-brainer build for single target every time there's only one target that you're hitting you should have to go with a gargoyle build it just makes sense whereas for aoe you should have an unholy frenzy type of build where it's focused around wounds and focus around cleaving damage so overall this is a very good change as long as they implement it correctly uh, next we have army of the damned talent returns as an even stronger force with a familiar and faithful recruit. The Magus of the Dead. Ooh, so they took an Ezra trait and added it to Army of the Damned. That's all right, I'm fine with that. Um, these formidable magic wielders have fought side by side with Meldrax's uh, Bannerman and their presence rallies on Holy Death Knight's ghoulish armies lobbing Frostbolt and Shadowbolt spells into the enemy. So just the Azerite trait, and they're adding it as, or adding it to a talent. I'm fine with that. 
uh, Magus kind of became a an iconic Unholy Death Knight pet. Um, so that's just cool that they're adding it. Next, we have Death Coil and Epidemic Cast will reduce the army of Army of the Dead's cooldown, allowing Unholy Death Knights to summon forth a relentless stream of monstrosities into battle. Finally, oh my god. So there's two ways of fixing Army of the Dead, okay? Either making it a three-minute cooldown and making it just deal less damage, make the ghouls only last for like 15 seconds, or add this. So I don't know what the CDR values will be. We already have CDR on our Dark Transformation from Death Coils, so I assume it will be either like two to four seconds per Death Coil, because you need a pretty significant amount of CDR on an eight minute cooldown to be able to use it two to three times in a fight. Um, and also Epidemic, I'm glad that they're adding the CDR aspect to Epidemic as well, because as we know, um, especially for Death Knights or Unholy Death Knights who do Mythic Plus, a lot of the times you need to make the choice between pressing Death Coil or Epidemic based on your Dark Transformation. If you want Dark Transformation to be up faster, you might be pressing Death Coils, even though you really want to press Epidemic for more damage. Um, okay, so next we have... Oh, Magus of the Dead will also fight by a Death Knight's side when they cast Apocalypse, which also benefits from a cooldown reduction whenever Death Coil and Epidemic are cast. Interesting. So Apocalypse, 1 minute 30 second cooldown. Um, like I said, they just added Magus to all our army abilities. Um, the fact that we now have CDR and Apocalypse is interesting. I guess they want you to... I guess they like the way Vision of Perfection played in this last tier, and they just kind of want to incorporate that a little bit. So we get CDR on Apocalypse, uh, similar to how we get it on Dark Transformation. I'm fine with that, um, and it will just, again, make Death Knights be less cooldown reliant um, and more just steady stream of damage for Unholy. Lastly, we have Unholy Death Knight's Mastery Dreadblade will benefit both Master and Servant by also increasing the Death Knight's shadow damage and the damage of their ghoulish minions, allowing undead armies to trample all in their wake. So this was a big issue with Unholy this uh, expansion, was that Mastery was just so awful on single target. Oh my god. Haste and Crit outweighed Mastery for most of this expansion, so hard. It, w it isn't until this last tier where Mastery kind of made a little bit of a comeback uh, because people are able to play Clawing Shadows since everything is kind of scaling a little bit nicer for Unholy DKs. But for the first three raid tiers of the expansion, Mastery was absolute garbage on single target. And that was a big reason why you couldn't play uh, Summon Gargoyle either. Because Summon Gargoyle does uh, shadow damage, so you just weren't playing mastery on single target so your gargoyle was not doing much damage and also the scaling and base damage of gargoyle was never fixed uh, which i'm hoping to see remedied going into the next expansion uh, but overall these are good changes i think there's still a few more things that i'd like to see them tweak i might make a video about that in the future but let me know what you guys think about these changes. It's kind of exciting to see DK um, get some of its iconic abilities back and potentially a little bit of a change to spice things up when it comes to gameplay. But that was the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye.